Let me start this by saying that I have nothing against electric cars. The Teslas are cool. I like what Garlitz is doing with his. Electric cars aren't my cup of tea, but I can respect what they do. I respect the technology. Nothing against them. But all of the talk these days is about the electric car replacing the internal combustion engine. Like it's going to happen tomorrow. And you know what? It ain't. And there's a few reasons for it. You gotta understand, right now the electric car is still a novelty. The people who are buying these things, they're living the electric car lifestyle. They're going into it knowing that they've got to charge it every night, that they have to plan their trips, that they have to be, you know, things have to be done just a certain way in order to maintain this novelty lifestyle. And that's all good, you know, because like I live the hot rod lifestyle. So I do all of the things in my life to, to, to accommodate my old cars and my hot rods and stuff like that. So it's the same thing. But for those cars, for electric cars to actually make it into the mainstream, where it's something that you don't have to think about, like the internal combustion engine, we're way, way, way far away from that. It takes all of the spontaneity out of daily life. Like for instance, you can't just have a change of plans. You know, you can't just travel to places that you haven't, you know, mapped out. That you know, they're, they're, you don't know where the charging stations are. Traffic jams are a wild card. All of these things have you on edge driving an electric car. You go about your routine, you know, you, you drop off your kid at school and you run to the store and then you go to work. You know, that's all good, but then you get the unexpected phone call. You know, Jimmy had an accident, you gotta go to school. So, you know, it's like, is it fully charged? Am I gonna make it there? Am I gonna make it back? You know, if there's a problem, if, you, if you're low on gas, it's two minutes at a gas station. If you're low on electric, it's two hours attached to one of these things just to get rolling again. And then you've got the other issue, which is like long-term use. The secondary market for electric cars is soft now, and it'll be even softer in the future. They only warranty these things for eight years and over 100,000 miles. All right, so the average person drives like 15,000 miles a year, but there's a lot of people who do 20, 30, 40,000 miles a year, which means that that thing's going to need batteries in three years, four years. It's the equivalent, the monetary equivalent, having to put an engine in your internal combustion car. Then you've got the quirkiness of the lithium ion battery. All of these cars, the electric cars, the current technology, these cars are powered by the same batteries that power your cell phone. And you know what happens with that. The first eight months, 10 months you've got it, you've got a full day of charge. You know, you're plugging in overnight and you know, you're all there. And then all of a sudden, you know, you only got 10 hours of charge. Then five hours of charge and you keep milking it until finally as soon as you unplug it from the charger it blinks itself off there's no difference between the battery systems in the electric cars and the ones you have today so essentially savvy electric car buyers new car buyers they're going to get out of these things at the six or seven year mark or before the hundred thousand miles pass them into the used car lot now this would be the equivalent of every used car lot being loaded with cars that need an engine People will buy these things. And you have to assume that everybody, for, for this system to work, you have to assume that everybody is of the same level of affluence and awareness. Somebody's gonna go out and buy an electric car, a seven and a half year old electric car with you know 110,000 miles on it and find that they only go three miles before this thing needs a full charge. You'll have these cars, if, if, they, if they're on the road in great numbers, you're going to have them dropping dead in traffic. You're going to have them dropping dead in the middle of the cities. You're talking about a massive gridlock situation based on just the normal battery cycle of these cars, of, of, of the lithium ion battery and how they just shit the bed all at once. Not a good scene. I could actually see electric cars being banned from crowded metropolitan areas. The very places where they're supposed to do their best work, I could see them actually being banned from being a nuisance. You know, all of these things need to be fought for. And then finally, you have the big one, right? Let's just say electric cars do take off like crazy, and they put a dent in the internal combustion market. They put a dent in the gasoline market. It hurts the profits of the oil companies. You know what? The oil companies, as always, have the last laugh. Because what they'll do at that point is say, hey, you know what? That 150 year old research that we really never got into very deeply that says that oil is a fossil fuel made from like dead dinosaurs and plants and stuff like that. You know, we were wrong about that. Actually, it seems that the earth sweats this stuff and it refills the wells just as fast as we can pump them out. Turns out oil is the second most abundant liquid 
on the planet. It's a renewable natural resource. Hey, you know what? We just need money to process this stuff. 99 cents a gallon and you're good to go. And there goes the end of the electric car market. So, you know, believe what you want, think what you want, go in the direction that you want, but electric cars, they ain't gonna happen. See you tomorrow.